So today I'm gonna to be showing you how to install an ARB differential breather kit for my rear differential on this 2019 Toyota 4Runner SR5 Premium. So it is four wheel drive. And the reason we're installing it is because when we go through puddles, we don't want this differential here to be submerged in water because that'll essentially force water or, or oil out the seals on the axle and then water will mix with the oil and that's not a good thing it'll screw up your uh, rear diff so we're going to be running the line for this diff breather um, up into the engine compartment so one of the first things you want to do is actually you want to drop your uh, spare tire and move this out of the way. I actually have a full size 285 tire, not the factory 265. So it does kind of get in the way of being able to access this diff. So what you can do is go into this panel in the back, open up these two latches, which I'm having trouble doing with one hand. And that'll pull right off. And in here is a bag with your tools to remove um, your spare tire. All right, so with your spare tire um, tool here, the removal tool, you wanna stick it into this hole. And in this hole, there's a, I can't really show you because I don't have the lighting, but there is a, uh, you'll, you'll look down here about this direction and there's a silver female piece that'll that'll look like that and you'll want to just fit it in there and then you just screw this um you know counterclockwise all right so as i'm screwing this counterclockwise you can see that my tire is starting to drop. So just keep screwing it until the tire sits on the ground. All right, now that the tire is fully seated on the ground, you can just go ahead and take this tool out and just move it out of the way so it doesn't bonk you in the head when you're under here. So, you can see here that this chain is what holds up the tire and it's got this safety mechanism and you want to essentially just pull this out and just set it out of the way and then you can move your tire out of the way. Okay, now that your tire is out of the way here, you can see that this is just dangling. You can, um, you can make this go back up by screwing that, that piece uh, clockwise if you wanted to. I'm just gonna leave it as is for now. But now we have a lot more access to the rear differential, which is right here. So let's get going. All right, so this is uh, what the differential kit looks like. You have your eight millimeter tubing. This is what's gonna be routed from the differential to your engine bay. Again, the purpose of this is to get the uh, diff breather away from the lowest point, which is right now the diff, and routed to a higher location so that water can't get into it, which is gonna be near my engine compartment or in my engine compartment. Um, also in this kit is the, uh, the filter, this ARB filter. So this will be mounted in the engine compartment and it does have different fittings so that if you have more than one differential or transfer case that you want to, uh, to route hosing to, you can do so with this. Um, then you have your, your plug kits. Here's a plug right here. And then um, some of your fittings and self-tapping screws. That's gonna be used for this piece here to self-tap into um, the metal sheathing in your engine compartment. 
and they also give you some zip ties so that you can zip tie this hosing underneath your vehicle so that it's not hanging down. So they give you quite a bit of hosing. There should be plenty. I'll probably end up cutting some of this. I don't think I'll be needing the full length of this hose to do this job. Um, one thing to also mention, I know I said I'm doing this for my 2019 Forerunner, but uh, this kit should be good for just about any vehicle. All right, so the first thing you'll wanna do is take your hosing and you'll wanna get some um, blue painter's tape. Let me just set this down here. Get some blue painter's tape. This isn't gonna leave sticky residue and what you wanna do is just tape off the ends of this hosing because you're gonna be feeding this hosing um, under your car. It may hit the ground, it may touch your car where there's dirt and you don't wanna get any dust, dirt, debris in this hose. All right, so I'm starting from the left side of the engine compartment and I'm gonna be feeding the hose down here Actually, it's gonna be down here where my finger is, this blue. Um, you don't wanna feed it next to the exhaust manifold. Um, just feed it in this right here because you don't want the line to touch the exhaust. It'll melt. It is, I think, uh, like polyethylene or plastic tubing. So it will melt, so avoid getting it near the exhaust and I'm just gonna feed it down and I'll get back to you. All right, so now I'm under my car and you can see that here's the exhaust right here, but um, up here is the engine bay where I just fed this line. And what, we, what I'm gonna try and aim for is just routing the line along with this electric line that's already there. So, Basically, just want to route it along just like that and make it a little tighter so that it's obviously not touching this. And then we'll route it all the way back into the near the differential. At this point in time, we're not going to be zip tying anything yet. We'll get there later down the road. So now I have some excess lines, so now it's going to be easier to feed this along here. Then I know the angle's bad, but you have this uh, protective metal plating from your exhaust system, and you kind of want to just route it behind there, because if you look behind, you already have um, electrical wiring back there that's being protected from the heat. So you just want to route it alongside there. All right, so one thing I did forget to mention is that um, I do already have ground clearance, so I can fit under my vehicle easily. I mean, I'm running 285s with it at a three inch lift. Um, so I can, I can fit right under here. But if you, uh, if you don't have the ground clearance, make sure to just, you'll wanna lift your vehicle. Um, make sure to use all the right safety precautions, you know, use jack stands, preferably not the failing Harbor Freight ones. But uh, yeah, just jack it up so that you can get under there because you will need to get under here and, uh, and route your line as I'm doing here. So essentially, you're gonna route your line. I'm kind of in the middle of the car right here, but I'm going back to the back, to the rear of the vehicle. I'm gonna route it down here somewhere along this sheathing back there in the back. And then eventually it's gonna route to the rear diff here. And uh, we're gonna leave some extra line um, near the back, near the differential, probably a, like a coil of line. That way if there's any uh, suspension flex while I'm off-roading or mall crawling, um, the line will be able to droop with the flex of the axle. Um, that way it's not tugging on the line and potentially uh, breaking it off. 
All right, another tip that I forgot was uh, make sure to put some safety glasses on. I'm getting dirt in my eyes under my car. That's no fun. Uh, another thing is make sure that your vehicle is, uh, is nice and cool. You haven't driven it um, because you're going to be working under there, you know, near the exhaust and the engine bay. And uh, you don't want that to be hot. You'll burn yourself. All right. So what you're looking at here, here's your um, catalytic converter. And above here, there's a heat shield. Kind of want to route it the line above the heat shield along your frame here and just up near here and this is basically the center on your frame and that's basically where you're going to end because your differential is right here and I know it's a pretty bad view but um, I've left about a coil's worth of line for flex and this is all going to be zip tied not tightly but so that it can uh, it can move but let me show you next how to um, essentially get this hooked up into the differential and then we'll start tightening things up and we'll work on the engine compartment as well because we still need to install that filter all right so now we're in the, we're in the back of the vehicle and the differential is right in front of me if you see this plug right here, well, it's not a plug. That's actually your factory OEM diff breather. And so what we need to do is clean that off, get all the dirt and debris off of that. And then we'll take a 13 millimeter wrench and we'll pull that right out and we'll install the new one. All right, so now that this is all cleaned off, I'm ready to remove this. And it really isn't that tight. So keep going counterclockwise until it's removed. All right, so now it's, uh, it's about finger loose. I use a 13 millimeter wrench. And uh, actually this one is, it's a 9 16 um, so now you'll just want to take one of these fittings and uh, pop it in to uh, in replacement of this metal fitting. The nice thing is these already have um, the tape on them, so there's no need for Teflon tape, additional Teflon tape. The kit pretty much comes with everything you need. Besides some wrenches, we're gonna need a drill later, you know, and, and the tape. And because I like to be a little extra cautious, I'm just gonna stick some tape over this so that while I'm screwing it down, I don't get any dirt in there. One thing to note is this OEM um, diff breather actually looks like it has more threading than the uh, the new ARB one. However, it doesn't have any Teflon tape. So I'm just gonna make sure that this is is tightened down so that I can't see any of the, the tape on the threading. But I don't wanna over tighten it um, because it wasn't that tight from, uh, from factory. All right, once you have uh, the tape removed, you can go ahead and insert the tubing into the fitting. Do a straight shot and then you'll just Push down and you'll kind of feel a clunk once it's fully seated, just like that. All right, the next thing you want to do is um, you want to just start zip tying your lines. So what I'm going to do is uh, probably end up zip tying this extra line that you see here and leaving a loop and connecting it be a zip tie here, leaving it kind of loose so that when the axle drops, it has room to move and flex with the axle. And then I'm gonna go alongside the undercarriage along here, and I'm gonna make sure everything's zip tied up, and then we'll get to the engine compartment.
here in a moment. All right, so the next step in the process is uh, filling up the holes that you're not gonna be using. So um, this is where the filter goes in this big hole. These holes just go straight through, so those don't need to be capped. I'm gonna cap this one at the top. As well as the other one on the top. Um, I'll show you that in a second. And then also I'm gonna cap this one and then this hole I'm gonna use for this fitting where I'll insert the tube. And just make sure that um, to use an Allen wrench to tighten these down. Do not over tighten these caps. The next thing you wanna do is create a template for mounting this into your engine bay. So you just take a piece of blue tape, painter's tape, put it over this like so. And then puncture the holes with your self-mounting screw. You can probably just flip this over, puncture the holes like so. Then you can use that to drill holes. Just like that. And like that. And there's your template. You can just pull this piece of tape off and that's your template where you can use for drilling. All right, so I put my template over here near the uh, air filter box, but on the, on the metal right there, and you see that the holes are there. So what you wanna do is take a drill bit that's a little bit smaller than your self-tapping screw, and you're gonna drill into these holes, and then you're gonna use the self-tapping screw to screw down this piece here and then you're gonna um, tighten down all these fittings and put your air filter on. Okay, so I got the, the holes drilled in. Now I'm using a size three Allen key just to snug these up a bit. Again, don't over tighten. All right, and then with your screwdriver, you're gonna take your self-tapping screws like this one and you're gonna just put it through and screw it down with uh, an, like an electric drill and do both sides. All right, now that you can see um, both self-tapping screws are in and it's mounted. Actually, I did forget to pull this tape off, so that was dumb, but I'll, uh, I'll pull that off. And then um, all you need to do is cut your cord to the length and, uh, and you'll just plug it back into here, which I have tape over it now so no dirt gets in. And then you'll put your filter, which is this piece, into that middle hole. Then you're done. All right, and just like that, you have your ARB differential breather installed. Pretty simple to do. It took me probably two and a half hours, maybe three, but that was also with filming. If you were to do it yourself, estimate probably if you're real technical savvy and you're quick, maybe an hour. Um, if it's your first time doing something like this, probably an hour and a half to two hours. Thanks again for watching. Please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell down below.